Okay, so now we are recording. Um, let's continue where we stopped from where we stopped last time. Last time we started to uh, uh, section according to my notes section three point two point two, right? Three point two point two, which was about simplify using the K map to simplify logic functions or logic expressions as a sum of product expression and this was uh, very simple we uh, uh, we introduced three basic steps the first one was basically to uh, uh, draw the map and fill it with the min terms or the max terms of the function depending how it's how, how is the function given uh, the second step was to identify the essential prime implicants and include them in our logic expression because if we want to define or to find the logic expression for some function we need to cover all its min terms all or all its max terms as we will see later uh, uh, in this uh, lecture so in order to do that we need to include the essential prime uh, implicants the third step we may need it or not we might need it or not depending on the distribution of the ones and the prime implicants that we find so uh, we cover the remaining ones we wrote these steps last time we cover the remaining ones with the minimum number of prime implicants we need to cover all the ones or all the min terms or we need to cover all the zeros or the max terms depending what kind of expression we want to get uh, the function at the end. So these were the three st uh, steps. Uh, um, let's take uh, one or two examples, then we move to uh, another related topics. It's still simplification using the uh, KIM. So <coughs> uh, example, uh, let's take this example, um, F of A, b c d equals sum of min terms i believe we did not cover this example zero two three um four seven thirteen um fourteen and fifteen fourteen and fifteen so this is very straightforward we want to find the sum of product expression for this function, the simplified logic expression for this function and the form that we are looking after is the sum of a product and we know what is meant by sum of product. So this is a four variable function. So basically we draw the four variable k map. And this is the most significant variable A, this is the next one, B, C, and D. And we said if we are working with some with one function only, we don't have to write that this is to indicate that this map is for function um, F. So uh, now the first step is to draw and fill the map. So let's start to fill the map. We have min term zero, we have min term two, three, four. 7, 13, 14, um, yeah, I'm sorry, there is 12 here, we have 12 also, 12, 13, 14. So this is the map, there is min term 12 is also a min term for this uh, function. So this is, this is the first step, draw and fill the uh, uh, map. Uh, for those who raised your hands, uh, uh, for my question at the beginning of the lecture, please lower your hand so that I know that you need to ask me something new. Jumana Dalia, yes, please. Um, so this is the first step. Now let's try to figure out where are the prime implicants. So we are, we are looking for the largest rectangles that contain power of two min terms at any region of in the map. So straightforward, with experience, you can quickly identify that this is a prime implicant. You can define a larger rectangle here. So let's say this is number one. This is prime implicant number uh, one. 
What else? What other prime implicates we can define? Yeah, let's consider this one. This one, we can, it is a, it is an implicant. We can buy, draw this rectangle. However, it is not the largest to include it. So we can merge it. It is adjacent to this one. So we can merge it with this mentor with this mentor and this is the largest that I can define to include these two ones. This is the largest prime impl implicate or rectangle that I can define. So this is, let's say number two. However, we have another choice for this one. It is adjacent to this one. So we can merge it, combine it with this one. So this is number Three. We can't put these three min terms together in one rectangle because they are, it is not power of two rectangles. So what else? Same thing here. We have for this min term, we can combine it. It is adjacent to this min term or this square. So we can combine it with this one. So this is min term number four. This is min term number four. Also, we have Another, the same idea, we have this prime implicant. So this one could be covered by this prime implicant, which is number four, or by this prime implicant, which is number five, which is number five. What else? For this one, we have two choices, right? We can combine it with this one, this is a prime implicant, and it is the largest that we can define to include these two ones. So this is number, let's say, six. And the last choice for this one, don't, all, don't forget this, is to take this one with this one, right? This is also because this is adjacent to this square. This square is adjacent to this square. We said that last time. So this is number um, seven. So this is the first and part of the second step because the second step requires us to find the essential prime applicants. And in order to find the essential, we need to find all the prime applicants. Then we identify which of them is essential. So let's start by, let's continue by uh, writing the logic expressions for these prime implicants. So number one, this number one is A intersection with B. So it is A, B. Number two, where is number two? Number two is this one. Anyone can help me with this? What is the logic expression for number two? Hi, uh, B, C bar, or D bar. B, C bar, D bar. D bar. Yes, thank you. So it is B, C bar, and D bar. So if you intersect these three regions, you will end up with these two squares. Number three, which is this black dotted one. What is the logic expression for this one? Rand, go ahead. Um, a bar, <coughs> or C bar, or D bar? A bar, it is in A bar, okay. C bar, C bar. yes, and D bar. D bar, yes, thank you. Number four, number four is this green one, which is B, C, and D. It is B, C, and D. Number five, number five is um, this, black dotted one also, which is A bar C D. It is A bar C D. Number six. <coughs> what is number six? Number six is the B red one, which is A bar, B bar, and C. A bar, B bar, and C. A bar, B bar, and C, and the last one is number seven. This one, 
the two ones at the top corners, which is A bar, B bar, D bar. Number seven is A bar, B bar, D bar. So these are all the prime implicants. So which of these is essential? Which of these is essential? Anyone? Awesome, go ahead. هلا الأولى هي essential. الأولى هي essential هي A B. يا مربعين يا مربعين مش. هدول if you look carefully, this one and this one are only included in this prime implicate, which is number one. So yes, number prime implicate number one is essential. How about the rest? Yeah, if you look carefully at this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, you can easily see that it is covered by more than one prime implicate. It is included in more than one rectangle. So none of these is essential. None of these is essential. So this is the second step. Yes, Mina, thank you. The first one is essential. So, <laughs> what is the logic expression? The th which is the second step now. We know which of these is essential. So, let me just I need more space here. So, F of A, B, C will be, as we said, we start with the essential to cover the ones that are only included in this essential. So. It definitely we have a b but if we write a b well, then we have only covered these four ones right in order to define the function we need to cover all the ones or all the midterms so we need to write the logic expressions that cover these five ones and now we have multiple choices we have multiple choices for example for this one what is the best way to cover this one we have two choices. Either we take a prime implicant number two, or we take a prime implicant number three. Which one is better? Run. Number three. three because uh, you can cover two min terms or two ones if you use three. If you use number two, it's fine, but you will need to add another implicant. You might need to add another implicant to cover three. So the best choice here is to take three to cover this one because you will also cover this one. So what is three? Three is A bar, C bar, D bar. Because if you remember last time we said we need to pick the fewest number of prime implicants to cover the remaining ones. Okay, so fewest is very important because the fewest will it means uh, fewest means that we are using less terms, less product terms when we write the expression. We are using less and terms when we write the logic expression. So if we write this, we have covered this and this. The same thing if you go to this one, we have two choices. Either we take it with number four or we can cover it using number five and it is similar to the previous case so we can cover it using number five and number five is a bar c d we are not finished yet we need to cover this one and for this one we have also two choices either we take number six right and in this case we are only we are also including a, a, a min term that we have already covered. Or we take num this one with number seven, right? Which also have the same cost, which is including this one, which was also covered by number three. So we have two choices. So this is or I have two choices. Either I take number six or I take number seven. So it is A bar b bar c or a bar b bar d bar and both are correct and both are 
um, uh, correct because it is the same cost. We have a product term that contains the three literals, a product term that contains the three literals, so it is the same cost. In other words, we need a three input AND gate. We need also here a three input AND gate to implement this logic uh, function. So this is very important example we, where we have alternatives. We can take this one or uh, uh, this one. The rule of thumb, when you pick or when you want to decide on the prime implicants that you need to use in order uh, uh, to cover the remaining ones, which is step number three, is basically to use the fewest number of prime implicants with minimum overlap with prime implicants that you already used. Because we don't want to repeat or cover uh, a min term more than once, more than once, to the best we can. Sometimes you can't. For example, in this case, you need either to use six or use seven, which overlaps with a, mint, a, pro, a prime implicant that you already used to cover this one or this one. So it is the same cost, okay? So this is very important. Always try to use the minimum number of prime implicants because this will affect the number of product terms that you have in your final Logic expression. Yes, Asim. Hello, Doctor. Maybe with the خلاص يعني مع الوقت أصير أعرف إنه أنا مش اثنين مش هحتاجه فخلاص بس بحط ثلاث وبحط خمسة. It depends. It depends on the question, on the problem. Like sometimes the problem asks you to find, for example, all possible answers. Sometimes it asks you to identify all prime implicants. But yes, if if the if the if the problem is just find. Uh, one possible simplified answer, yes, you can put whatever, uh, any of these uh, answers. Okay. Any question? All right. So uh, this is how to simplify functions using um, or into uh, a sum of product expression. And this was, uh, I don't want to say it was straightforward, but it was somehow, uh, uh, um, uh, somehow um, related to the way we constructed the map. The way we constructed the map was based on the idea uh, or the concept of min terms. If you remember, we defined the map based on the concept of min terms and the, 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 the location of the variables and their complements was based on that fact that we are working with the min terms. So obtaining the sum of product from the sum of min terms, if you remember, is somehow related because the uh, sum of min terms is a special case of the sum of product. So now the question is, what if we want to simplify the function as a, into a product of sum? We don't want sum of product, we want to simplify it as a product of sum. And this might be useful in some cases because the cost of the sum of product expression might be more, but might be much higher than the cost if we implement the function as a product of sum. So can how can we use the map to how can we use the map to implement or to simplify a function into a product of sum. We want to simplify a function as a product of sum. So this is the topic of the following subsection, which is 23.2.3, which is simplifying simplification as product of sum. So now if you remember product of sum is sum is related to the product of max terms. So if we want to simplify a function into a product of sum, we might think that we need to define the map as a product as uh, in terms of the max terms. However, this will become confusing for most of us. If, uh, we will, in this case, we will be working with two ma types of maps. Um, a, a map that is 
defined in terms of min terms, a map that is defined in terms of max terms. So uh, 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 we, in order to do this, we need to redefine the map in terms of max terms, right? Because the map that we have worked with so far <laughs> is basically defined based on the min terms. However, this is confusing. I, I, I believe that most of you are already confused because this is a new, uh, confused in using the map because it's a new concept. So how, what if I give you another form of the map that is defined in terms of the max term, so it will be uh, confusing. How can we avoid this? How, how can we find the POS, the simplified POS expression of some function without redefining the map, without drawing the map in terms of the max terms? In other words, we still want to use the map that we defined based on the min terms. Any idea? Okay, so if we take the prime implicants for the zeros, which are the max terms of the function, uh, and we find the sum of product expression using the zeros, this will be the sum of product expression for f bar, right? Or the complement of the function. If we take, the, if you if you take the complement of that, you will get f, and the sum of product will become the product of sum. Yes, that's that's correct. We don't need to re, to define another map. So basically, we can. However, to avoid this, we can find the POS of f of some function f by finding the SOP of f bar, then take the complement. Okay, and in order to find the sum of product of f bar, all what we need to do is to look at the zeros. We combine the zeros, but in our mind, in our mind, we know that these zeros are ones, but they are ones for f bar. So, yes, uh, uh, so we, we, uh, cons we think of them as being ones, and we combine them, we obtain the sum of product for f bar, then we take the complement. So F bar becomes F and the sum of product, the complement of SOP is POS and vice versa. Yes, Sarah, thank you for your uh, answer. Okay, so that's it. So let's take a very simple example to demonstrate the idea. Um, if we have function of W, X, Y is sum of min terms one, three, six, and seven. So we want to simplify this as product of sum. What is the product of sum of this function? Simply draw the map, three variable function. We draw the map. This is function f. So this is w, this is x, this is y. And the min terms are one, three, six, and seven. These are the min terms, and the max terms are zeros. So now, because we want the POS of F, we will combine or we will find the prime implicants of F bar, which are the zeros of F. So we have here a prime implicant. We have here a prime implicant, right? And we have also this prime implicant. So we have a three, it's not, we have this prime implicant, this prime implicant, and this prime implicant, 
and the black one. So we have three possible prime implicants for F bar. So what is the logic expression for this one? This one is in W bar and Y bar. So this is W bar, Y bar. Uh, what is the logic expression for this one? It is W X bar. W X bar. What is the logic expression for this, the black one? Any help? This one. Anyone can answer? Um, y bar, X, X bar, Y bar. X bar, Y bar. Right? X bar, Y bar. So we have three possible prime implicants for F bar. What, how did I know that? Because I am looking at the map of F and I'm using the zeros. So I don't need to draw the map of F bar because I know that these zeros for F are the ones for F bar. Now, which of these is essential? Is the, this one essential? Yes, because it is the only one that contains this zero. So yes, this is essential. And if we pick this one, we cover this zero and this zero, we need to cover these two zeros. So we need to pick this one, which is also essential because it includes this one. How about X bar, Y bar? If we pick this and this, we cover all the zeros. So we don't need to use this one. And it is already, it is easily, it can, you can easily see that this one is <coughs> not essential prime implicant. It is not essential prime implicant. So basically, F of W, X, Y is, I need to take the essential, right? So I write W bar, Y bar, or W, X bar. But I have to be careful here. This is the sum of product expression, not for F. It is the sum of product expression for F bar. It is the sum of product expression for F bar. Now we want, to convert this sum of product of F bar into product of sum for F. So basically we take the complement, so F bar becomes F, W, X, Y, and this will become, and um, I need more space. So if you take the complement, F will be F of W, X, Y will be, this or becomes and, and this and becomes or according to De Morgan, and you complement the variables. So it will be product, it is a product of sum. It is a product of sum. Yeah, Jumana X bar, Y bar is not essential prime implicant. So when we started to write the expression, we use the essential prime implicants. And if we look at the used, used essential prime implicants, we have covered all the zeros of the functions of the function. So we don't need to use X bar, Y bar. Now, if you put here X bar, Y bar, the function is the same, but it is not the most simplified expression. It is not the simplest expression, okay? Uh, because this, if you want to write it this way, this is additional cost because it implies that you need, uh, instead of a two input OR gate, you need a three input OR gate and you need a two input AND gate, an extra two input AND gate. So this is the basic idea. It might be confusing at the beginning, but with the practice, you can uh, um, understand it uh, better. Any question? Okay, so let's take one more example or two examples, then we move to the next topic. 
So basically, we are still in chapter three, which in which we are learning the tool to use to simplify logic function functions, which is very important when it comes to designing logic systems, because at the end of the day, logic systems are described using logic functions, which has which have to be optimal, which have to be uh, simple in order to reduce the cost, as we said right at the beginning. Okay, one more example on this. Um, <coughs> or before I do this example, if I go back to the previous example and I ask you, what is the sum of product of F? This is a continuation on the previous example. What is the sum of product of F? If you remember the map was this, and this was W, X, Y, and we had min term one, three, six, and seven, and this is the map for F. Sum of product for F, you have, um, Okay, we have this prime implicant, and we have this prime implicant, and when, then we have this prime implicant, and um, this is essential, this is essential, and this black one is not essential. So if essentially F as a sum of product, because I'm using the min terms of F, so I can find the sum of product directly, which is the one, the thing we did in the previous subsection. So what is this? It is W and X, or this one, which is W bar and Y. W bar and Y. Now F as a product of sum that we got previously was W, bar or x right uh, w or y so the idea now which expression to use when we implement this function you need to count the gates now there are more details about co calculating the cost how to calculate the cost of logic expressions however if you look here if you consider all gates are of the same cost for example two input or gate is the same as two input and gate and so on. Here we need uh, one OR gate, two AND gates, and one inverter. Here we need one AND gate, two two input OR gates, and one inverter. So the cost is the same for the two. If I just do the do it, do the calculation of the cost this using this simple approach, uh, I just count the number of gates. Then. The SOP expression and the POS expression uh, uh, have the same cost. In this case, using this very simple way to calculate uh, the cost. Okay, but in other cases, in other cases, the cost could be different. So you may choose to implement the function as a product of sum, not, uh, not uh, as a sum of product, or vice versa, depending on. Uh, the function okay so let's now look at another example of this idea <laughs> okay so example uh, find the POS of f of w x y z equals sum of min terms um, zero two three four five six seven eight Nine and thirty. 
So we want the POS of F. It's very important uh, to read the question carefully because sometimes I will ask you, find the POS of F bar. How to do, how to do that? Simply find the SOP of F, then take the complement. So we know, we know this, this duality thing, right? Uh, the SOP of F is the POS of F bar. And from that, we can find the POS of F bar and vice versa. <coughs> so straightforward, we will draw the map, let's say for F, We can, you can start by drawing the map for F bar, it's okay. And you fill the min terms of F bar or the ones of F bar, then you, <coughs> then you take the complement. So it is important here to indicate which function you are working uh, with. And here we have W, we have X, we have Y, and we have Z. These are the min terms of F. So these are the ones which are 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 11, if you remember, 12, 13. 13. So these are the ones of F, but we are looking for POS of F. So we need to look at the ones of F bar, which are the zeros of F. So these are the zeros. So now we try to find the prime implicants using the zeros, which are essentially the ones of F bar. So it is very clear this is a prime implicant. And this is a prime implicant for these two. And this one cannot be combined with, with any other uh, squares. It's not, uh, it cannot be combined. So these are the prime implicants for F bar. Which of these is essential? This one is essential, right? Um, this one is essential. And this one is also essential. The three of them are essential. And if you use all of them, you will cover all the zeros. And you need to use all of them because they are essential. So what will be F bar? Now we are talking about F bar because these are the ones or the prime implicants of F bar. What is the logic expression for the green square? Very quickly. Uh, w boy. W, Y, right? So it is W, Y, or we need the logic expression for this one. Ali, can you answer? What is the logic expression for this one, the red prime implicate? Yes, Ali. Why? When موجود هذا الريد ريكتانجل وين موجود يا علي؟ بأي منطقة؟ تقاطع أي مناطق؟ دبليو والإكس دبليو أند إكس، but if you take the intersection of دبليو أند إكس، you end up with this row or these four squares. We want only two out of these four squares. So it is the intersection with Z bar. So it is دبليو intersection with x intersection with z bar because if you intersect with z bar you end up with these two square it is w x and z square and the last one this one what is this what is the logic expression for this prime implicant it is basically it basically contains one it basically contains one square or one min term, mm -hmm. right? So I don't need to do all that intersection. This is min term number one. What is the logic expression for min term number one? It is W, w bar, bar, X bar. Y bar Z. 
Z. And you can read that off the map. It is W bar, right? X bar, Y bar, Z. So you can read it from the map or you, you can quickly say, yeah, this is min term number one. So the logic expression for min term number one is 0, 0, 0, 0001, if you remember, which is W bar, X bar, Y bar, Z. Okay, so now this is F bar. We take the complement to obtain F. So if you take the complement, this will be W bar, Y bar, and it with W bar or X bar or Z and it with W or X or Y or Z bar. So this is the POS. This is the POS of, of F. Now, <laughs> if you look at this expression, what is the logic diagram? You need an OR gate between W bar, Y bar. You end it um, with W. I will try to use two input or uh, two input gates only in order to comp to do some comparison. W X OR with Z. Okay. So you and these, sorry, you and these together. Okay, so this is ended with this or with this. Then you need two input or gates, two two input or gates. You here, you or them together. Take these together, these together, then you or them. So it is Y, Z bar. Here we have uh, W, X. Then the, the result of this, you end it with this. Of course, we can make it look prettier by using three input and four input gates. But I want to do, I did it this way in order to calculate a simple, uh, the cost simply. How many gates do we need here? We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we need one inverter for Z bar. We need one inverter for W bar one inverter for Y bar and one inverter for X bar. Where is X, W bar, no, I did not write it here. It is W bar, X bar. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gates plus four inverters. So we need 12 gates. If we want to implement the function as a product of sum, as a product of sum. As I said, there is another way to calculate the cost, but I'm doing it in a very simple uh, way. Uh, I'm using two input gates as one unit of cost, and the inverter is also one unit uh, cost. So we need 12 gates, four and five, nine, or what, what, uh, eight, and four inverters, 12. Okay, now let's try to compare what we got here in terms as a product of sum. This is the POS of F, by trying to find the SOP of F directly from the map. So if I ask you what is the SOP of F, you will try to find the, uh, 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 pro, uh, the prime implicants for F. So we have these four together, and we have these four together. We can put them together. Right? And we have this also is a possibly prime implicant. We have this is a possibly prime implicant. This is also a possibly prime implicant. And finally, we have this is a possibly prime implicant. And this one. Right, all of these are possibly prime implicants for F. So uh, try when you, after I finish the lecture, after I finish the lecture, try to find the sum of product expression for F. It draw its logic expression using two input gates only, 
and find and compare the cost. I will leave it for you as an exercise, as a, as a homework. So uh, uh, these are the prime implicants. You may draw the map, uh, a separate map for the prime implicants of F. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And then calculate the cost using this simple uh, approach. So if you look, um, you can start, you may, this is essential, this will be essential or not. It could be, try, try at home to calculate the cost of this function when it is implemented as a sum of product and see which expression for the same function is less expensive. The POS expression or the SOP expression that you will uh, find at home. Okay. So uh, this is, uh, I want you to do this in order to see why we are discussing this, why we need sometimes to find the POS expression or the SOP expression. Why not always to find the SOP expression? Because the SOP expression might not, might not be the cheapest implementation of our uh, uh, function. Okay. Yes, awesome. هلا الكونفرتر يعني هلا هو تقريبا إنه cheaper than than and or يعني. إيش what do you mean by يعني يعني هسا أنا لما هو اللي بخلي ال W ل W bar. Inverter you mean. Inverter صح. Uh, I cannot tell. I cannot tell. Uh, uh, that's why, uh, so the cost calculation uh, that is in the textbook, or the way that I'm doing it, I'm working with gates. I say that the gate, the cost of this is the same as this, as this. Okay. It is there. It is there. But for simplicity, in order to avoid uh, crowdness عشان يصير المعجب بدل انا لازم ارسم هيك I need to draw it this way uh, W Y oh, okay. but for simplicity we just do it this way okay uh, otherwise the logic diagram will be very uh, crowded uh, but at the end of the day when you want to implement this function you need to use inverters so that's why I counted them here. Okay. So please, if you are writing notes now or after the lecture, leave some space to find the SOP expression, draw the logic diagram using two input logic gates only and compare the uh, cost. Okay, any question? Okay, so now let's move to the last subsection, which is also related, but it covers a new simple uh, idea, which is also, uh, we are still talking about using the map to simplify logic function. This. So section 3.2.4, which is um, simplification with don't care. Condition. Oh, conditions. Depends. Okay. So the idea here is when sometimes when we want to design logic systems, which basically means we want to find the logic expressions or expression that describe the relation between the inputs and outputs in this system, we may encounter very special cases when we want to design uh, 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 
this system. And these cases are referred to as the don't care conditions. And basically, the idea is very simple. In some functions, we may uh, have the following two cases. Num case number one, when we want to, let's say, the, write the truth table of this function, we may encounter one or more of these uh, two cases, one or both of these cases. The output is not defined for some input values. So we have a function that defines the relationship between the input variables and the output. However, this, for some of the input values, the output is not defined. For example, if you input 110, the output is not defined based on uh, how the system works, based on how the system process, uh, processes the input. So this is, this, this is one case that we may encounter when we design logic uh, system. The other case, is the input or some of some of the input combinations may never occur so the function let's say is a function of four variables and for some reason based on the uh, nature of the system the input value when some of the input values may never occur. For example, a value of 0, 1, 0, 1 may never occur. A user, the user will never input this value to the system. So how to fill the truth table in such case? How to define the min terms and the max terms of this, of such function in these, of t, in these uh, cases? Such cases, such Cases, uh, cases are called don't care cases. Don't care, and we denote them by x. So when we have such cases in our function, in the truth table, in the truth table, we just, we need to fill the truth table. So for some inputs, let's say some inputs may never occur. What is the output? We just put X. And what does it mean to put X? Is it a third value? No, it's not a third value. We are working with a binary system, which means we have either zero or one. X implies or means that we don't care what is the value here. It can be considered as one. It can be considered as zero. So we denote this by X, we say we don't care. So how to work with this? How, how to work with this X when it comes to simplifying the function using the map? How, what to fill on the map for the min term that is, or the truth table row that is filled with X? Simply we put X on the map, which means we don't care. In other words, we can treat this X as one, or we can treat this x as uh, 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 zero. So x implies on the map, assume zero or one. You can assume it to be zero or one on the map, depending on your need. If you are combining ones, if you are combining ones, or in other words, if you are finding the prime implicants in terms of ones, you can assume the x's to be ones or any of the x's to be one in order to make your prime implicant larger in order to reduce the cost. If you are combining zeros, you can assume 
sum or all the x's to be zero, depending on your need, in order to make your prime implicant larger, in order to reduce the cost. However, there is very important and a tricky point here. X's or don't cares, you don't have to cover all the don't cares. You need to cover all the zeros or all the ones, but you don't have to cover all the don't cares. But you can use one or more or all the don't cares in order to make your prime implicants larger. And this will become clearer as we show a few examples uh, now. So basically, don't care condition is not something uh, uh, difficult. Uh, in some cases, when we want to describe, when we want to design uh, logic uh, uh, systems, we may encounter one or more of these two cases. The output is not defined for some input, or some input values may never occur. Some of the input values may never occur. <laughs> so let's start by a very simple example. We have three examples. So, example, simplify f of w, x, y, let me write it, w, a, b, c, which is product of max terms. Um, let me just um, see what, uh, the best way to do it. Zero, zero. Okay, so it is uh, max term zero, max term four. However, it has don't cares, and we usually denote them like this. We like d um, um, two six. This implies that the second draw or row number two row number two in the truth table the output is don't care row number six the output is don't care or min term number two is don't care min term number six is don't care max term number two is don't care max term number six is don't care regardless how you think about it Sim we want to simplify this as um Let's take the two cases. Sum of product. Um, let me add one more here. Um, seven. I will add seven. Just to demonstrate something. Uh, seven. So this is don't care. Um, as a sum of product, initially uh, the first requirement is to to find it as a sum of product. So simply we say f. And this is A, this is B, this is C. So we fill the map. We have two max terms for this function, which are 0 and 4. These are the zeros, the max terms. However, we have also two don't, three don't cares, which are number 2, number 6, and number 7. Number 2 number six, number seven. And here we have the ones, the rest are the ones. These are the don't cares, which is number two, six, and seven. These are the max terms, which are zero and four. And the rest are ones or min terms for the function. So now we need the sum of product expression. How to do that? We need to find all prime implicants for F. And in, in other words, we need to find the prime implicants using the ones. So how to do that? In the case, we, in case, in this case, where we have don't cares, we said these don't cares, we can assume to be zero, or we can assume to be one. We can assume all of them to be zero, right from the beginning. We can assume all of them to be ones, right from the beginning. Or we can assume whatever we need, depending on our, uh, need. For example, we can assume this to be zero, we can assume this to be one, and so on. Our target is to create the largest prime implicants that we can. 
in order to reduce the cost. So if I want to simplify this function as a sum of products, I want to collect the ones, I want to combine the ones. So in my mind, I know that I can assume these as ones. So can I, I can say this is a prime implicant. This is a prime implicant. Assuming that these ones, not that I did not change these ones, these don't cares to ones. I, I kept them as X's, but in my mind, I know that I assumed them to be ones because I combined them with one. Why didn't I change them to ones? Because this, this is, uh, I said it I, before, you don't have, when you simplify the function, you don't have to cover all the don't cares. You need to cover all the ones. So if you change all the don't cares to ones on the map, you will be forced to cover all the ones because this is the procedure. But, but this is not required because these are don't cares. You don't have to cover all of them. You need to cover the ones or the zeros, but you can use the don't cares to make your prime implicants uh, uh, large. Another prime implicant is this one. Another prime implicant is this one. So now, what is the sum of product expression for this one? I need to know which of these is essential. So basically, this green one, this black one, is essential because it has these two ones in it. However, is this essential? No, because it contains only one one, and this one is already covered. Is already covered in the and this is prime implicant. So this is an essential prime implicant. This is not essential prime implicant. Okay, this is very important because if I pick this one, I cover all the ones and this X is also covered, which is, which would imply that it is assumed as a one in my logic expression. However, I don't need to use this one because it contains X's and one, and well, this one is already covered in this prime implicant. So if will be, this what is this is simply c it is simply c now this is assuming that i assume this x to be one what if i assume this x to be zero here we assume the included x to be one if i assume this x to be zero then i will end up that I have this prime implicant and this prime implicant. So the function will be B bar C. This is B bar C and it will be A bar C. So this is, I'm sorry, this is F will be B bar C or A bar C. So note how the assumption of x changed the size of the function or the size of the expression or the cost of the uh, expression, okay? So, and the other thing to, to, to keep in mind that we did not have to cover or include this prime implicant in our expression because it only contains x's and a single one that was already covered by the black prime implicant. Okay, so now number two, if we want to simplify as a POS, simplify this function as a product of sum, just, I will draw it again in order to make it clear. So we have the same function, one, one, x, 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 and zero, zero, this is the map for F, A, B, and C. So I want POS for F, so I need to look for the zeros. Uh, uh, if I assume, assume x to be zero. So I assume these x's to be zeros. I can make this prime implicant larger. So I can take these with these because they are considered as zeros. So in this case, f will be, what is this red one? 
it is C bar. Now, if you assume the don't cares to be one, to be one, so I can't assume, I will assume this in my mind to be ones. I cannot create this one. I need to use the green one or this prime implicant. This is the only choice I have. So F will be B bar, C bar. So note how the use of don't cares, the use of don't cares usually helps us in obtaining shorter expressions or smaller, uh, <coughs> smaller expressions. Yes, this is, I'm sorry, this is F bar. So this implies that F is C and F here is B or C, okay? So still there's a, there is a difference. This is, uh, this could be more expensive than this one if I consider to input or uh, more expensive. And effectively, I need a get here, I don't need anything here. So this is more expensive than this one. So if I assume X to be zero, helps me to create a larger rectangle in terms of the zeros. So the cost is less here. The same case is here. So this is the basic idea in the don't care. I keep them as is in the map, but uh, uh, I can always assume any of these don't cares to be one or zero, depending on my need. My goal is to make um, the rectangle or the prime implicants as bigger as possible in order to reduce the size of the end term. The larger the rectangle that you make, the smaller its and expression okay and the larger the rectangle that you make the fewer number of the rectangles you will need to express the, the the function which will reduce the number of terms which will reduce the number of terms okay any question is it clear so uh, before we close, if I ask you here in the first case, what are the prime implicants for F? You will tell me this black one and this green one. Which of these is essential? Only the black one. Which of these will you use to express the function? Only the black one because it covers all the white. So if someone comes here and write it is C or B, which includes this one, that's fine. It is the same function, but it is not the most optimal one. Okay, it is not the simplest one. Okay, so this is very important. We don't have to cover all the don't cares, but we have to cover either all the ones or all the zeros. Okay, Ramzi, uh, may I ask you, how did we know that if here was, ممكن تحكي رمزي إذا بدك أنا مش فاهم شو اللي كاتبه. If you can. مرحبا دكتور. أهلين رمزي. أهلا أنا بس بسألك كيف عرفنا إنه هاي كانت F bar لما حطينا C bar و B C bar. هون. نعم. Uh, لاني جمعت الصفار تبعت اف اه uh, دائما لما يكون بي او اس اف بار يعني لا مش دائما لا لا مش دائما لا حسب انا شو بطلب منك انا طالب هون بي او اس اوف اف اس او بي اوف اف اوكي فاذا بي او اس اوف اف وانا راسم الماب تبعت اف فانا عم بجمع الصفار فلما اجمع الصفار معناها انا عم بسوي الونز تبعون F bar. The expression that will come out is F bar. Okay, but that's why I was I needed to take the complement here. Yes, sir. Okay. Other questions? Okay. But the هيك من باب ال يعني الانتراكشن انا عارف شوي الموضوع صعب بدي اعطيكم سؤال جربوا تحلوه واللي بحب نيكست تايم وين وي ستارت يو كان شو اس يور سوليوشن 
you can show us your solution. So try at home to simplify, simplify the following. Um, um, simplify f equals sum of min terms um, 3, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus sometimes they write it like this, sum, sum of d. It's okay. Okay, well, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, let me try. Okay, stop. Okay, the camera. Doctor, ما في صورة. Ah, لحظة شوي. Um, let me check. Just a second. <laughs> اوكي يمكن الصوره مش واضحه شوي بس رجعت الصوره اوكي ام سو بدي اياك تجرب في البيت اي وونت يو تو تراي انتل نيكست تايم تو سمبليفاي ذيس فانكشن ويتش از ذيس فانكشن ويز سم دونت كير سم تايمز دي رايت ات لايك ذيس سم اوف دي اور product of the or the way we did it previously don't care uh, the don't cares for this function uh, let's say 3 9 11 12 13 14 15 so it is don't care 1 4 and 6 1 4 and um, 6 so simplify this as sum of product and as product of sum. So if anyone wants uh, to share us to, to share with us his solution next time, uh, we can do that at the beginning of the lecture. So next time I will do this example. I will do another example uh, you, uh, regarding the don't care. Then we move to the last topic in this chapter. Uh, before we go to chapter four. Okay. Any questions? Doctor, this example, just just simplify as POS or SOP. Yes. We do assume zero or we do better. No, no, no. We always do the best, which is not to assume one or zero. As we said, on the map. You, when you try to uh, find the prime implicants, wherever you need the x to be one, make it one in your mind and combine it with ones. Whenever you want, whenever the x helps you to build or create a larger prime implicant using the zeros or the ones, yes, assume it in your mind, okay? Don't do what I did in the previous example. Let x to be zero, let x be one. We usually don't do that. In other words, we don't usually assume all x's to be zeros or all x's to be ones. We only assume whatever we need. Okay, we need the SOP for F, the POS for F. Okay, you can also, if you want, do the SOP for F bar and 
the POS for F bar for exercise. Okay. Come on. So, uh, we'll see you inshallah yom al itnin al qadim next uh, Monday. How do you think we can handle this? Try to do uh, um, more uh, examples from the worksheet and from the uh, textbook. Jude, you have a question? Bidi asal. متى حيكون في محاضرة زي تعت مبارح إكسترا؟ مبارح إكسترا؟ مبارح ما كان في آه كان في واحدة على تنتين I think. أمم لا ما كان في محاضرة إكسترا مبارح. لا لا ما كان. طيب. أمم ما بعرف اللي وصلك أنت بالضبط. أوكي. أوكي. ما يعني so far so far إحنا يعني ماشيين كويس. ممكن لقدام نسوي لنا شيء اكسترا. الان احنا وي هاف ا تي اي فور ذيس كورس. بدي احاول اشوف اف مش المهندسه سميه. المهندسه سميه هي مهندسه في الجامعه. وي هاف ا تي اي مريانا هو جريدز ذا كويزز يوجوالي. سو اي ويل تراي تو بيكوز شي هاز تو دو سم Um, uh, certain working hours per week, ممكن I uh, can arrange in her to help you as if she can. Uh, so I can arrange for some kind of extra uh, of uh, office hours for her to do some uh, questions and answers for you. Let me see if she can do that. Okay, I'll I'll let you know. تمام.